course, you know, as always, uh, here on the Thursday edition of the M Airport Podcast, I'd like to bring in one of my fellow reporters to talk about some of the hot topics going on in MMA. And on this edition, we are joined by Jeremy Klump of Fansided.com. Also, he does cover the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL draft for NFLSpinZone.com. Jeremy, appreciate you coming on the show to talk about what is going on in the crazy world of MMA. You know, we're, we're several days now removed from UFC 196 and really... It's still the hot topic in MMA. Really, there's not much else going on in MMA. Everything is still talking about UFC 196. I mean, let me let me just ask you, as you're watching those fights on, on Saturday night, what's kind of going through your mind after uh, Misha Tate and Nate Diaz get the victory? First off, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you, uh, you know, asking me to come on here. But going off of that, I completely agree. I mean, it, it's been the hot topic. It's going to be the hot topic. I mean, Dana White's also even feeding that fire a little, but we'll talk about that later. You know, I was watching the fights. I actually uh, I put my name down as to pick McGregor to win, but deep down, and I know everyone says this, but you can ask all my uh, fellow guys at Cage Pages, I predicted Diaz by submission. I actually wrote an article, you know, five ways Nate Diaz can win, and submission, I predicted at the end of it that he'll win by submission. So I just toot my own little horn there. But, you know, watching them lose, I think the biggest problem was you saw some major holes for some major UFC fighters. I mean, I'm a big fan of Holly Holm. But, you know, Misha Tate kind of exposed her there. I mean, that that was kind of – she could have maybe turned her body, went into it, but instead she tried to stand up, which was a crucial mistake, which ended up costing her her belt. And then Connor, uh, I don't really know what he was doing on the ground. He got tapped out. But definitely big-time losses for the UFC. I see a lot of people saying, oh, the UFC is going to lose a ton of money, which maybe they will, maybe they won't. I'm not really going to get into that. I don't know numbers that well with all that. But just uh, just big losses, man. I, I didn't expect Misha Tate to beat Holly Holm at all. Uh, big upset there. I did expect – I mean, Diaz, he, he's a one-of-a-kind fighter, man. I love watching him fight. I did expect him to beat McGregor, but I didn't expect it to be like that. I mean, McGregor – you know, he goes out there, he dominates people at 145. He looked like McGregor at 145 against opponents, but, but he was the one that was, you know, tuning them up a little. So when I was watching those, I watched them with a couple of friends and family, and, and everyone, even when McGregor, like, they were all saying, wow. Well, like, there was lots of wows around the room. Like, oh, my God, Diaz is tuning him up. Because, you know, it looked flashy. Connor was throwing his left hand. He was throwing that uppercut. But Diaz, every time that McGregor would land one of those left hands, he was going one, two, one, two. He was getting in and out. He was landing some pretty hard jabs, some pretty hard rights. So it, it was just one of those times when you watch the fight, and it's almost like your jaw drops, and you're like, oh, my, this is really going to happen. Like when Misha Tate got Holly Holmes back like that, everyone was like, oh, like ever, oh my God, oh, my God. I mean, it happened, and that's what, what happened with Connor. Everyone's just watching. It's one of those, those big moments in the sport. But, you know, that, that's definitely why it's a hot topic. They're just big, big people to lose there and, and just really kind of change the landscape now for those divisions. And, and it kind of gets everyone thinking, what's next? You know, you've got articles every which day, every day saying, oh, this person should fight this person. I mean, it, it really did. In a sense, I think it helped MMA. But in another sense, you know, Dana White's probably not very happy about those losses. Yeah, I, I think the way to really sum, uh, summarize it is it was not an ideal night for for the UFC. I mean, I, I part of me is I, I still – it amazes me the amount of, of hatred that Conor McGregor gets, and especially from fighters because the one thing I say is you know what they say about karma. So when you lose and Conor McGregor starts talking about you, understand you had this one coming because of the way you handled it. Um, I, I thought personally, I thought he handled himself with class um, at the post-fight press conference. Quite honestly, and you cover sport just like I do, there's a lot of fighters who can learn a lot from Conor McGregor of how to handle themselves after defeats. Yeah, I agree. I love it. Uh, my fiance even said she watched the fight, and when Conor lost, she goes, oh, he's going to make an excuse. And then he had his, uh, his post-fight press conference with Rogan, and she said, wow, you know, he handled that well. He did. That, that's how you did it. And John Jones even reached out on Instagram, I think he posted a video and, or Twitter maybe, but you know, you could just see it, you know, he embraced that he lost. He wasn't going to be a baby about it. Wasn't a sore loser. It wasn't his night. Like he said, he took a risk, which a lot of people say, Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, that was different from McGregor. He went up and wait. It looks like he was carrying his weight a little differently that, you know, he didn't handle it very well. I, I, I thought he was a little gassed at the end of the first going into the second. And, you know, no excuses. He said he took a risk. It didn't work out. On to the next one. I think it's funny now, though. You know, got, got Aldo calling him out. Dothanio, like all these people calling him out. 
like you said, karma's coming around. I mean, McGregor's not, this isn't the end of his career. He lost to Nate Diaz. I mean, he's coming back. I mean, Aldo got knocked out in 13 seconds, so I don't know why he's opening his mouth because that makes no sense. So I like what you said. You know, karma's going to come around to these guys that are bad mouthing Conor McGregor because he's going nowhere. Conor McGregor is still probably the biggest name in MMA right now. Oh, I think there's no question. He, he he's the biggest name in MMA. I mean, and honestly, Jose Aldo's tweet may have you know while it 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 angered the the out the uh, the McGregor camp probably the the biggest loser in that tweet may be Frankie Edgar because you know what Jose Aldo might get that immediate rematch he's looking for now. Uh, I would hate it. I, I agree with you. I think that Aldo played it well with that by by terms of hurting Frankie Edgar's chances because now people are, are really mad and they think that McGregor and Aldo should go again. But uh, I don't want to see that at all. I'm sorry. I think 13 seconds. I mean, I understand it was one punch, but what, what if that happens again? What a waste of time. What a waste of everyone's you know, abilities right there. We could be watching Conor McGregor, Frankie Edgar, which I think would be a, uh, that's a great matchup. I would love to see Frankie get his chance. I mean, Frankie's done everything he's got to do to get his chance. I just think uh, I think it's a little nerve-wracking, I would say. I think McGregor's coaches, not that I'm, you know, fond with what they're thinking or what they're talking about, but in my opinion, I, I would honestly say McGregor's coaches are calling for the Aldo fight more than the, the Edgar fight. I think a little bit of fear that, you know, if Edgar goes in there and he beats McGregor and he loses two in a row, that could, that, not could, that would, that would crush conor mcgregor's big status out there so i think the aldo fight makes the most sense because if he does lose which i don't think he ever would now i mean he dominated him in that 13 seconds if he would lose then you go the third one they fight again and there's still the hype he still has another hype fight if he would go out there and lose to edgar i mean i, I don't know what do you do with conor mcgregor then you rematch him to edgar maybe but what if edgar goes out there and handles him and then maybe you go aldo edgar i think i think it's a very interesting matchup but i understand why McGregor's camp would want Aldo instead of Edgar. Look, the Edgar fight's a fight I want to see, but I can't help but wonder, has the way Ali Abdelaziz has handled this situation over the past couple months of things he has clearly said about Conor McGregor, could he be hurting his client Frankie Edgar in getting this fight? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if he has as much pull in the UFC. And I mean, no, I'm just saying this because look, Connor's the one who's picking his opponent. We both know that. And I just yeah, wonder sure. if Connor looks at that and says, "You know what? I don't care for your manager. I'm your lottery ticket. I'm not going to let you make the biggest payday of your career." Yeah, I think that's actually a valid point. But I, again, Connor, uh, Connor, I'm a big fan of his mentality. I mean, I think Connor looks past things like that, and he wants to fight the best people. And he wants to put on the fight that the fans want to see. And I think at the end of the day, his, his management might be calling for Aldo, but I think Connor's going to push for that Edgar fight, knowing that that's what the fans want to see. And he knows, I mean, he says his checks are big and all that. So I think he knows that that might be the big fight. And I mean, I, I definitely would rather watch Edgar McGregor than Aldo McGregor, too. I mean, let's be honest about it. It, it really doesn't matter who's standing across the cage from Conor McGregor. It's it's going to be a big fight because Conor McGregor sure. is the show. I, I mean, look, I, I I talk to people in the bar industry. No one's buying a Frankie Edgar pay per view. I mean, let's just be that's just being honest about it. They would buy it because it's Conor McGregor, and I think that a lot of people have to understand that. While Frankie Edgar may be a big name in terms of MMA fans, when it comes to casual MMA fans, they really don't know who Frankie Edgar is. Yeah, they're big Conor McGregor fans. I completely agree. I mean, I have a couple friends who are into MMA now, and they don't know any other fighters. They'll, they'll be watching fights. How's this guy? Is this guy good? Is this guy good? And then they'll be texting me, when's Conor on? When's Conor on? When's Conor on? So I completely agree. You know, casual MMA fans, when they hear Conor McGregor, that's the UFC to them, and that's who they want to see. Exactly, exactly. Of course, uh, you know, Nate Diaz on the other side of this. I put it out on Twitter. I think the matchup to make is Eddie Alvarez, and I put a Twitter poll out there. You know, I mentioned – uh, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Robbie Lawler, which Dana White kind of was kind of warm about possibly doing that matchup. Also, uh, maybe a rematch against Rafael Dos Anjos. For me, I, I would not be opposed if the UFC gave Nate a title matchup, whether it's at 170 or 155. But to me, I really think that it's go with the Eddie Alvarez fight or if Khabib Nurmagomedov or Tony Ferguson cannot make it to April the 16th, I think Nate Diaz would be a very suitable replacement for that fight. 
Uh, I think he's suspended till the twentieth, though. Isn't he medical suspension? Oh, that's right. Yeah, the 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 hilarious medical suspension till uh, April twentieth. So that that puts that out. But I mean, I I think the matchup with Eddie Alvarez is the fight that makes the most sense because I don't the winner of Ferguson uh, Nurmagomedov to me is a clear number one contender at one fifty five. Yeah, I, I, I like that fight, but I've been pretty vocal about wanting to see Diaz be able to pick his fight because at the end of the day. Conor McGregor, like we said, he picks who he fights. He decides who he fights. Conor was picking that if he won, if he beat Diaz, he was moving up to fight Lawler. He got the pick that he wanted to fight those Anios for the lightweight title. I, I agree with Diaz saying he's the new king. I mean, he beat the king. I think Diaz should be the one that has the final say. If he wants to go fight Robbie Lawler, I don't think it'd be fair. I, I think that's bad business by Dana White if he'd tell Diaz, no, nope, you don't get the pick. I think since Diaz is the man who's defeated the man, Conor McGregor, Diaz should be able to sit there and say, you know what, which fight has more money? Do we got more versus me versus Lawler for that title or me versus Dos Anjos? I think he should get a title fight just because that victory is huge. I mean, I don't think he, he's not even in the pound-for-pound pound rankings, which I guess I understand, but let's be real. I, I'm a firm believer that if you beat someone, you should take their spot. I mean, that's just – it's man versus man. You, I mean, Conor McGregor moved up and – Jose Aldo knocked down after he beat him. So I think Nate Diaz should be in the pound for pound rank. Well, you got to remember, though, Nate Diaz is 6 and 5 in his last 11 fights. Oh, I, I understand. Completely agree. But that also should be a knock on Connor then. I mean, no, if Connor no, wants yeah. someone who's 6 and 5, then he should drop down. So I, I would like to see Nate Diaz get a title shot. I, I know a lot of people, you know, don't even, some people didn't even know who Nate Diaz was, the casual fans. They just wanted to watch McGregor, as he said. But, I mean, Diaz went out there. He won pretty well. I mean, he held his own. I, I would love to see him pick his fight, and I'd like to see him get vocal about picking his fight because, you know, he's a big vocal guy out there. He, he even said, uh, you know, I'm the king. He posted – I think Diaz's brother's Facebook account posted a, a picture that says, like, the new king of things, and he's sitting in a big chair with a, with a crown on or whatnot. So I'd love to see Diaz pick his fight. But if he doesn't get to pick his fight and then make it Alvarez, I'm not complaining. That's yeah. a great fight, and I'm a big Eddie Alvarez fan, obviously, sitting over here in Philadelphia. I, I love Eddie Alvarez. I, I think what could hurt Nate Diaz a little bit, is, is this a guy who's had a very rocky relationship with the UFC in, in terms of the contract issues he's had? Obviously, he, do, he does hold a lot of things in his court. And, you know, one of the things, and, and I, I didn't realize this actually till fight night. I wish I would have realized it much sooner. But it, it to me is, you know, Nate Diaz, I mean, look, I, I was there at that, that Fox show in Orlando when he, he beat Michael Johnson. I mean, he he's clearly one of the the most popular fighters with the fans, and I think a lot of that just simply is because you know he's going to speak his mind. There, there's not going to be any political correctness to it. He's going to tell you exactly how he feels. But it was w interesting to me the fact that this past Saturday night was the first time he has been on pay per view since the end of 2011. Wow! See, I didn't know that. I never looked into that. That's actually a very interesting uh, thing to look at which could actually, I think that goes into maybe him not getting a title shot then if the UFC is not really putting him on paper. Yeah, I mean, it makes, it makes you wonder. Him on pay -per -view. Yeah, yeah makes, for sure, definitely makes you wonder. It makes you wonder kind of what the, what the UFC thinks of him as a draw, and, you know, we'll see what happens to him. Of course, the co-main event, Misha Tate beats Holly Holm. I, I went on record. I thought Holly Holm was absolutely going to destroy Misha Tate. I was wrong. <laughs> Me, too. Kudos, Me too. Kudos to Misha Tate. I thought she fought a, a very smart fight. Uh, you know, fought a, a a much different fight than Ronda Rousey did against Holly Holm, and you know, and, and one of the things about uh, you know Misha Tate, it, it obviously sets up a big fight for her. Regardless, it is interesting to me if all of a sudden, if we start hearing Ronda Rousey is ready to come back in July, as opposed to November, which was the original target date for a rematch against Holly Holm. Yeah, I saw that, and I wasn't a big fan of reading that. You know, I'm a little upset because. You know, I don't really like rematches for title fights, but I would rather see uh, Misha Tate Holly Holm two than Misha Tate Ronda Rousey three. I just, oh, I totally agree. I'm not a I'm not a fan of that fight, and I don't. And oh, man, maybe this is a bad thing to say, but like, I just wouldn't be a fan of Ronda Rousey coming back and you know taking on someone she's beat. It's pretty much like the UFC's trying to put the belt back around her waist, which I don't like at all. You know, I, I just think Holly Holm was the champion. Yes, she lost, but I had her winning the fight before she got tapped out. I, I want to see a rematch. I don't want to see Ronda Rousey come back. And, of course, now she wants to come back. She, I guess they, she texted Dana White and said, I got to get to work or something like that. I forget what the exact words were, which 
almost seems to me that, you know, what if Holly Holm would have won? She wouldn't have came back to work. She would have waited. What, is she scared to fight Holly Holm again? That's not cool. Why does she get to pick her matchup? She just lost. She's not even the champion. So I, I do not like that fight at all. I definitely, I, I will be on record saying, unless I have to cover the fight or do anything for fan side, I will not watch a Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate three on pay-per-view. I refuse to pay for it. I refuse to do anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Look, and, and if I'm the Misha Tate camp, I'm trying to get on UFC 200. You know, try to get in the co-main event of that fight car because with pay-per-view points in the contract, it, it just makes the most sense for her. Of course, Dana White coming out to, and blasting Holly Holmes' management. Which, if anyone's been following the whole uh, UFC v Holly Holmes management over the past couple of years, this really should not come as a surprise. You know, Dana White clearly does not like her management, and this is. How many times have we seen this where Dana White blasts someone's manager because clearly, uh, you know, the manager may be uh, difficult to deal with, which at the end of the day, as a fighter, you want a manager who's going to go in there and get the most money they possibly can. Yeah. And I, I don't like Dana White talking out about against the manager saying, I think he said something along the lines of Holly Holmes shouldn't have fought Misha Tate. I hate stuff like that. She's the champion. What do you mean she shouldn't fight Misha Tate? If you're the champion... You should be the champion and be able to defeat anyone. Why would you hide and run from any opponent? I do not like that. I kind of hate that comment from Dana White. It's almost like he's handpicking. Again, this is what I'm with the Ronda Rousey thing. It's like he wants people to hold the belt and he wants, let it happen. Let it play out. Let the people who are the best fighters be the champion. Have the best fighters fight. I don't want someone to fight. I, just because Misha takes a bad matchup for Holly Holmes, that makes that, I want to see that then. That's a good fight to me. I want to see how the champion does against someone who's a bad matchup for her. I mean, I just I, I disagree with Dana. I think him complaining about the management is a little childish, in my opinion. Like, go go out there, and if you're going to complain about matchups, then what's the point of of us watching the best fighters? Because clearly, the best fighters aren't fighting the best fighters. If you're if you're mad about it, so, disagree with Dana White. I'm actually happy Holly Holmes management went out there and let her fight Misha Tate. And now we'll see what else happens with uh, with Holly Holmes. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, you don't get pay- you don't get paid to sit on the sidelines. I mean, that's I yeah, mean, that's exactly. just that, that's a fact. You gotta you gotta fight to get paid. So we'll see. There, there's a lot of interesting. I'm really interested to see what happens with Kat Zingano when, when she comes back. You got Amanda Nunez, uh, you know, it, and I hope that fans get more interested in the entire division as opposed to just interested in what Ronda Rousey and maybe Misha Tate and Holly Holm are doing uh, in that division. But because of what happened on Saturday night, no one is talking about what Darian Caldwell did on Friday night. I thought he'd beat Joe Warren, but good Lord, you talk about going out there and making a statement victory. He just put the entire 135-pound division on notice. Yeah, oh, that was that was sick. I, I just think I watched that video of him picking him up and slamming him like, a hundred times over, but uh, I don't know how you feel about Darian Caldwell, and I might make a lot of people mad that listen. I think he's overrated. I, I I don't think he's fought the level of competition that someone like him should be fighting right now at this point in his career. I mean, Joe Warren obviously is a big name, but he's up there in age. I mean, he, at the same time, he hasn't really fought crazy, crazy competition. I think if Caldwell went to the 135-pound division in the UFC, I don't even see him defeating anyone in the top five. Uh, is Aljamain is Aljamain Sterling six? Who's six? Uh, Sterling's six. five or six. He's somewhere in there. Five or six. Even, he might not even beat anyone in the top ten. If I look right now at the names, I, I don't think. I mean, Caldwell's good. He's obviously a, a prospect out there, but I think he's 28 years old, nine and zero. I just, I, I feel he's just an overrated guy to me. I mean, he's. Bellator's guy right now, obviously, because he's going through everyone. But I just don't think he is legit. Like, at 135, I saw him talking all that trash with Sterling. I think Sterling would just wax him. I think it's over if he goes in there against Sterling. I think anyone in that UFC division has a fair chance against Caldwell if he would be in the UFC. Obviously, good for him doing work in Bellator. That's where he's at. He's dominating. But, yeah, I'm just uh, – his, his victory was awesome. I'm not going to take that away from him. That slam was amazing, all that. But – I. Him against someone in the UFC, I'm just not a fan. I really, I think he is one of the most overrated fighters out there. I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think him being back at Power MMA is, is big for him. He, he's got those issues taken care of. Um, you know, I, I think that where I didn't like what Bellator did with him is after he, he got the win over, over Rafael Silva, is they gave him Sean Bunch, and I was like, this is a downgrading competition. No, no disrespect to Sean Bunch. 
Um, but you know, look, he's he's going to get the title match up, and, and we'll see what happens uh, with him. I mean, it's always it's real, it's always tough when when a guy's outside the UFC to say where he stacks up because until they they get it, you know potentially get in there, um, I, I don't you know you, you really don't know, and I don't and I get the sense from Darian Caldwell that um, you know his whole thing is about making the most money. You know, it's not necessarily about fighting in the UFC. We'll, we'll see what happens there. Of course, uh, I did find it very interesting that Bellator just basically had no interest in Aljamain Sterling, which if I was a Bellator 135-er, that would, I would want to find out what, from the promotion why that is, why they were not interested in bringing in a top five guy. And also, does that mean that Bellator doesn't want to fork over big money for a 135 pounder? I mean, I think if you're in that Bellator bantamweight division, that's got to be questions that are, are going in your mind. I would say that they didn't want to bring him in because they know that he'd run through everyone, and then the 135 pound division would be kind of dead because Sterling would be top. He'd be better than everyone there. And I just, I'm a big fan of Sterling. I know Sterling pretty well, so I'm a little biased, but I just think Bellator understood if we bring Sterling in here, we might make money to begin with. But if he starts running through everyone, we're not going to be making much money. No, it's it's obviously it's something you have to. Uh, but you know they're they're dealing that with Phil Davis. I mean, Phil Davis might end up running through that 205 pound division and. And look, yep. they, gave, they gave Phil Davis a lot of money, a lot yeah. of money. So we'll see what, what happens there. But, of course, uh, you can follow Jeremy on Twitter at Jeremy Klump. Let everyone know where they can follow you all, get all your content at. Oh, yeah, you can follow me uh, at Jeremy Klump on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook, Jeremy Klump, and that's Klump, K-L-U-M-P. I joked around before we came on the show. It's like Eddie Murphy's The Nutty Professor movie. Um, you know, I'm, I'm writing MMA. I'm covering MMA right now for fansided.com, so you can check me out there. And then uh, if, you, if you're a big NFL fan, uh, I write about the Eagles on NFLSpinZone.com. That's part of the fan-sided network. And I also cover the NFL draft there. So if you guys are interested in reading anything like that or, you know, interested in getting in some conversations with me on Twitter, I'd love to have you come and talk. So uh, I appreciate your time. 